I'm walking from it. He must have something in his bag. Suddenly, my forms of feeling secure are not, I make me feel insecure sometimes. And that is to do with the kind of policing issues that I surround me. And I have to then engage with people who are concerned with policing issues too. You know, all range of things begin come into focus by an identification. The sonic bit allowed me to kind of lay foundation. And that's why I like to talk with some people who are talking about punk or rap or, or hip hop. I mean, see, this guy was about to, was kind of motivated me to listen to Tupac again. I said nothing, like if I don't know. But, but I know exactly what it triggers in my mind. Partly was his mother, but also how, what it did to my listening, listening nose. So it's already kind of old fashioned as far as my grandchildren are concerned. But at the same time, I'm hooked somewhere. Why am I hooked? Because it's a soundtrack. It's a, it's, a, it's a sonic moment born out of a marginality of a sort. So I'm a, I'm a junkie for marginality, yeah? for things outside the center, outside the, the citadel, just on the margin, sometimes making a break. I'm not interested in gatekeepers. I really am not. I'm, I'm just not, I just, I, I, that's an injustice, in a sense. So the, the notion of injustice I want to kind of invoke is not party political, although sometimes I use that to describe it. I want to have a much broader sense. And I think that broader sense allows us to have a grip of what one calls a planetary politics, in which difference in the French sense mean that, you know, means being, think of ourselves as a different parts of the same, of, of kind of trying to live together. I'm an incomplete subject without somebody who's different from me. That's the best way. That's different from me. It's come together now. I'm, a diff I'm an incomplete subject. So in other words, my subjectivity is never complete. I am an incomplete story without you. So if I, I can only, and that's why imaginary is, from an artistic point of view, is the key to that. It says not guarantees, but it's the key. So. That 60s moment, it is all sorts of problems, but for a moment, for a fleeting glimpse, we imagined a counterculture. We didn't get it right. I mean, if you talk about it through the story of gender, you know, my God, I want to run away. <laughs> it was awful for women. It wasn't. It was just something that I can't even give you the language for. But at the same, so that's why I mean, there's no guarantees perpetually, but it was. A counterculture. You know, there was a without the flower power, which is the, the product of the art schools, a new thing on the intellectual landscape in this country. I doubt very much that there will be any flower power stuff. That's what countercultures do. That's why. That's why I was trying to evoke that. I wasn't. I hope I wasn't. Well, you can go to to what is it? Blastonbury this week. It's happening now. You know, it's all the same. <laughs> it's not, not, not it's a bloody expensive thing to do. I mean, you need 15 credit cards to make it there, okay? That's how neoliberalism does things to cycle culture. There are no guarantees. But nevertheless, that sensibility, that sensibility of the counterculture is what I remember most about the, the thing and how it connected to people my generation who were in, the, in Southern Africa at that time were able to connect with other young people internationally. Anyone else? Questions or comments? Really? Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was sort of wanted to ask you, but I think it's a bit late now. We're just about to break for lunch. <laughs> you can hope to ask me anything. One minute left to <laughs> ask you how you got recruited into Zandlo and your experience. Well, no, the, 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 the weirdest, I mean, that is actually, it's come back to me lately. Yeah. Um, it, I know it, the date specifically. It was right. the 23rd of August, 1963. Mm. Okay. There were young people, they, at the time, they were, they were dominant. Zapu was the the main political party. Mm. And they were beginning to be a little group of breakaway of read by mostly teachers, you know, and so on around. And, uh, and I, by association, most of the, there was a kind of like struggle over territory, like a bit like warlords in Jamaican politics. 
So there were Jandabos, used to call them, in Zapu. And who would just go around saying, you know, that one is a member of Zanu. Okay. Why? Because I think his father is from that area and so on. So you ran for your life. That's what happened to me. Okay? So I ran. <laughs> My mother had told me about Innocent Color's house, which is in the area where we lived in Highfield. And I went in, I went in to just kind of jump with the gate like this, I went to the, the back of the house. Unbeknown to me, the press conference is going on about the formation of Zano as a breakaway to what was going to become another convention of Zapo. So it began as a story of safety for me. But also all the other young cool guys. The thing was, it was expected if you were bright kid and cool, quote unquote, you can't be Zapo. You must be something to do with Zano. You just kind of assumed to be the case. Right? A bit like the, the mods and the, the, the whatever it might be. No, so, you know, so we, I was just kind of like assumed to be without really necessarily sitting down and say, I choose this one. Mm. So all my circle of immediate friends, in order to navigate my way through Highfield, themselves were also caught up in the melee in that way. But, but my, my historical, sometimes I talk about it in a very tight way, about my grandfather telling me this, da, 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 da. that's true too. But it, it sort of, you sort of led to that moment, but it, it wasn't the decider. Um, if I had, I could have much as well stayed in Zappa, really. The only difference, it became increasingly different because of the more I became more and more involved in the insurgency activities inside the country. And the networks that I developed as a result of that insurgency is what drew me closer and closer and closer. 23rd of August in Zimbabwe this year will be the day of the national elections. Mm. And so don't for one moment think that date was chosen randomly. It's connected to that date. Mm. 60 years ago. Interesting. Formation of Zalu. We have to uh, another bit. We have to break for lunch. That's it. It's the start of it. Another whole cast next story, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, so we'll start again in this room. Uh